So let's break down how Hans Zimmer put together time from the movie Inception. There are three things we're going to look at to help us understand how to build this type of cue. One, harmonic language and pacing. Two, melody. And three, layering, either through added instrumentation or what the instruments themselves are playing or rhythmic changes. So let's um, get into this and just take a look at it. So as it relates to harmonic language, um, Hans's cue is centered around G major, although it doesn't feel like really bright, uh, like it's in G. And I think that's because of his opening chord choices. So the harmonies are two, six, one, Five. So it's two chord, two six, one. And then what he'll do sometimes is substitute the four chord uh, for the six chord. So. And in terms of pacing, his chords change every measure. Now, if we look, take a look at his melody, um, it's a full, pretty much a four note phrase, but on the second half of the phrase, he changes one note. So now it turns into an eight bar phrase instead of a four bar phrase. Pretty common technique. Uh, change a note or two in the second half of your melody. Not only does it extend your phrase, but it also makes your phrase a little more interesting. So uh, his melody is... And his melody is moving as at the same pace as the harmony. So if we put those together. And then as it relates to his layering, um, he is pretty much layering every four bars. So like we talked about, that's either through adding instrumentation, through changes in what those instruments are doing, or through rhythmic changes. But every four bars, he is changing the layering and continuing to build uh, the Q2 and Apex before he breaks it back down uh, on the ending, which ends on the um the opening theme uh and it's, it's a really great cue so obviously i don't want to play it here and get dinged so if you know go check it out and bear these things in mind now when you listen to the cue so now let's take a listen um to the flight of icarus and then we'll take a look at how i use time um as a guide to build this cue
Okay, so there you have it, uh, Flight of Icarus. Um, and as it relates to the harmonic language of this particular cue, it is in E flat minor, um, and it does later move to G flat major. Um, and in terms of the uh, structure of the chords here, uh, four to six to one, to a minor five is the chorus that I'm using. So A flat minor to C flat, E flat, and then B flat minor. And I do various substitution uh, that you may have noticed and I'll kind of point out um, as we break it down. So as it relates to pacing, I'm using the same pacing chord changes uh, every measure. And then as it relates to the melody, pretty much the same concept as well. I have a four note melody. And then in the second half of the phrase, I add a note between notes one and two, add a note between notes two and three, add two notes between notes three and four to make the second half of the phrase a little more interesting and to change it from a four bar pattern to an eight bar pattern. And the melody is real simple. Second half. Right? And then as it relates to my layering, I use the same pacing uh, for my layering in terms of using some, introducing some type of different element every four bars. And of course, I end on the opening theme um, as well and the instrumentation is pretty much the same. I think I moved to a solo cello on the uh, very end. Of course, when we open, uh, we open with cellos and violas um, on the melody. So, um, so just kind of to get into it um, just a little bit, the way that I open up the cue is Hans opens his cue. He starts right on uh, the melody right from jump with the piano, but I actually just do a small uh, four bar setup, really five bar if you count uh, the harmonics uh, coming in, and then I introduce uh, my theme. So in, in this opening, you'll hear the high harmonics, and this is a pedal that pretty much runs through the entire cue, and I talk a lot about pedals um, in another cue that I did. I'll link that uh, if you want to check that out. And you hear a light synth. Now, theme comes in, and when my theme comes in, it's the cellos and the violas. A light loop, we just introduce something new here. Low string ostinato and celeste. And now a high ostinato. And that's a string ostinato, of course. Now our bass, our drums. And now the violins join in on the theme. Okay, so let's kind of just break down some of that a little bit, just in terms of what I'm using. I just want to show you a few of the things that I'm using. So the um, piano ostinato, of course, that kind of sets everything up is I'm, I'm using um, Keyscape uh, for that. And I'm using this uh, scoring uh, this duo scoring piano Celeste. Is it Celeste or Celeste? I don't know, but whatever it is, so <laughs> that's what we're using. All right, and I'm gonna say Celeste or Celeste. I don't know what I'm gonna say, but anyway, so that's what we're using there. And um, so let's just listen to that.
Okay, and as you see, so, you know, I've been talking about high passing so much. Um, you guys definitely see there, but I do have a slight bump, uh, 4 dB uh, bump at around 4K, just to give it a little more sparkle. And of course, I'm using some reverb and delay uh, on this. And using them both as send, so I don't have an uh, insert of delay, but just I just have a send set up for my reverb uh, and for my delay. Um, and then as it relates to my harmonics, um, let's see here, what we have here. So I'm using a full ensemble and of course you see it's on harmonics. Uh, there, I just have a slight auto update going on. There we go. And um, we just have that on Legato and Concertino. Of course, you know, Concertino um, is just the strings using mutes to just give it that real light muted sound. You can barely hear, but it's a nice pedal pretty much that I carry through. Um, you hear that? So that's just riding across the entire uh, first, really first two full phrases um, of the cue. And the only other thing that I have is, and, and if you guys know me, you know, I like the um, Paul Bowski uh, synth. And I am using um, that here um, as well. And it's just, just a little um, added um, instrument. So here we go. And again, just using a cutoff filter um, just to give us some, some interest there. And that's, that's all we're doing there. So just. Okay. That's the intro. Um, that, that's all it is to it. Um, and then, you know, we played the first section, you know, as well. So just in terms of what we're using um, as it relates to our cellos and viola. So we are using, of course, the cinematic studio strings and just a legato and of course i'm just using the close and the mains and then of course have everything running through um close and the mains on the cellos as well and have everything running through uh the same reverb so just to put them in the same room since i'm, I'm putting them a little closer in the mix and if you just want to hear those kind of broken out So very simple. That's what we're doing there. Um, and then the um, Celeste, Celeste. <laughs> okay, that I'm using is a um, center perk, um, you know, su such a list that um, I layer with the um, Keyscape piano um, and Celeste. So here's what we have. And you hear that? I don't know if you can you hear the reverb and the delay on it. love that so it's so it's so just so pretty and then if you add that with keyscape and of course if you add in the viola and cello melody the harmonics and so the next thing is you hear is the ostinato and of course um, just still uh, same thing is we're using cinematic studio strings um, again for um, the short ostinatos and I also layer in some originals epic strings as well okay so cool 
So that that's everything there. Um, and then, you know, this is the type of cue. All this cue just continues to build. So when we get to this section here, we've now um, added in our violins to help carry the melody. And, and, and look, guys, in all honesty, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit as it relates to the sound, because as you'll see here, um, I have, you know, first and second violins, violas, you know, celli, everybody playing the melody, but as you can see, I mean, I'm cheating because I do have um, violins and violas also playing the string ostinato. So let's just say it's Divisi, right? You know, but it's just, we're trying to just get the sound that we want, that the sound that we have in our heads across, as opposed to writing exactly the way something would be written, written for a live orchestra. Um, so this would be more so something that's recorded and then played uh, behind something. Um, so there you have it. So, um, but in this section, so of course the violins come in to carry the melody and then we also add some percussive uh, elements as well. So we add a low tom, uh, some ethnic toms. Of course the loop is still going. We add a little glock, uh, glock and spill accents as well to help us with the melody, a tambourine, and then just a, a bass drum for some additional support. So this is what this section sounds like. And for the first time, we have some harmonic changes. So now I reverse in the, in the harmony. For the first time, the five chord of G flat. So now we add a horn counter and he, they add harmony to the melody. Another harmonic change to the E major. And you can hear how it just continues to build. We also added a snare drum. So now by the time we get to this section here, where we introduce the trumpets, we also introduce low brass for the very first time. So we haven't had any low brass yet. Um, and we um, vamp up the drum rhythm just a little bit more. And then the ostinato goes up just to uh, give us some more length, but let's just play the, the brass section uh, when we get here. And hang on a sec, let me do that for you one more time to get that uh, piano out of there, okay? Let's play it again. So just, you know, beefing it up uh, some more, if we add the percussion uh, with that. So you can see it just continues um, to build, right? And so we, we get through this particular a section here and we get a big break and then you'll notice that now it goes to a major feel and I'll kind of talk about that a, a little more in terms of, of moving um, to major at, at that point and then what it, with the other instrumentation that's added. So we're building, we're going somewhere.
So let's talk about that last section. So there's so much happening here. So what happens in this final section after the break? So just quick, if, if you guys know anything about the story of Icarus, um, he and his dad uh, were in prison. Just this is the cliff notes, cliff notes. He and his dad were in prison, but you can check it out. His dad was um, just could build off. He, he had built a labyrinth for the king, and that's what kind of got him in some hot water with the king and put him in prison. But his dad was very talented in terms of building. So he and his son were in prison. He wanted to get them out. He wanted to escape. So he came up with a great plan of using some tree branches and, and wax to hold the tree branches on to create wings. So he created wings for himself and for his son, Icarus, right? And uh, for them to escape. And he told his son in teaching him to fly, make sure he did not fly too close to the sun. Because if he did, of course, the wax would melt and his wings would fail and he would fall to his death. So, um, so Icarus, they out near flew and Icarus would he was so excited he would go up and then he would go down uh, to the sea and then he would go up even higher and down to the sea and he just kept you know going up higher and higher um you know towards the sun and two actually he did reach you know to get too close to the sun and the wax did melt and he fell and he drowned in the sea i think that carrion sea um or something like that but in this section basically what you hear so in your mind's eye the break is um in my mind icarus the last time his last descent towards the sea before he's going to make that final push to try to get up to the sun and then this last section is him oh man just rising 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 up you know as close as he can get to the sun so that's why it kind of switches to like a major key um, you know, feel or whatever, just to kind of give you that. And then of course, boom, he doesn't make it. And then our final coda takes us back to the minor key, then ends with that same instrumentation that we started with. So I'll play that last section for you one more time. Now we added the choir, right? We added Piatti, uh, but I'm going to talk about Piatti uh, in particular. So this is a, a, a tip that a friend of mine, Hans York, and many of you probably may know of him. He's an incredible composer. If you don't uh, know about him, definitely check him out. He's, he's really dope. Um, but a tip that he gave me was to use different Piatti samples. Um, so you don't have, it doesn't sound like you have this same exact uh, symbol hitting at the same exact space sounding exactly the same because if someone plays a symbol it sounds different every time they crash it so his point being hey use a couple of different samples so it sounds more realistic so what i do um in this case is i use both the um Cineper, i'm sorry and the bbc um piatis in this case, to try to give it a little more realism. So if we just play this section when they're introduced, you can hear how now it sounds like this person is hitting the symbols differently as opposed to just, it sounds exactly the same and sounds midi and sounds a little more fake. Okay, but, uh oh some reason my uh, Cineper Piatti is not hitting. So, should that be on channel one? Let's see. Yeah. But the point I want to make is weird how sometimes Cubase, I don't know, the MIDI channels will just change or maybe it's something I'm doing and I don't realize it. But if you ever notice, like you have a sound and all of a sudden it's not playing, check your MIDI channel because that, that may be your issue. All right, so here we go. So two different symbols, obviously, but in 
the mix, it really makes it sound more realistic um, because it, it doesn't sound like it's just one person back there just hitting uh, the same symbol. So then other than that, the other thing is I do add one more low brass element and I add some more percussion um, just to kind of beef up the energy. I mean, you see all this different percussive uh, energy um, down here. So let's just listen to um, the percussion real quick. Listen to this. So, I mean, the, the percussion <laughs> section is now wide open. I mean, they're, they're going for it now. Um, and then outside of that, you'll notice that the harmonic pacing gets just a little faster. So, so just all that energy uh, just kind of helps build us uh, up to that point. So, and then outside of that, and the harmonies actually change um, as well. So a lot more centered around, like I said, G, uh, G flat major and everything that's happening there. So I'll just now play it through uh, from this last section again, in your mind's eye, imagine Icarus uh, just making his final push up towards the sun. And then obviously him not making it and drowning in the sea um, as you listen to the final coda. So here we go. I'll play it uh, from, from the big drum hit. So there you have it um, for this week's um, you know, episode. And as always, you know, I just hope um, that you did enjoy it. I hope that you did get something out of it. Uh, of course, um, if you did, please like, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, my goal is to every week have a, a video wherein we're talking about something or we're talking about these different uh, concepts or techniques or approaches. Um, to writing music and, and again we're on on a journey I'm on a journey as a media composer and I want to take you on this journey with me certainly leave comments in the chat if you have any questions just leave some comments I'll be happy to answer them for you uh, until next time peace and thanks for checking me out all right take care